Okay, uh, this time through we're going to be talking about the sidereal day versus the solar day. Um, here we are, there's the sun. Uh, sometimes we like to think we know that it's the sun because the sun says two scoops of raisins. Uh, other stars might say something like uh, half a gallon of blueberries or something. And so our sun says two scoops of raisins. And so here we are on Earth and we're orbiting the sun. And as we orbit the sun, um, we can, we're also rotating. Uh, our rotational and our orbital angular momenta are aligned. So if we put our fingers in the direction of our, of our right hand, we put our fingers in the direction of the orbit, our thumb points out of the board. Uh, that's our orbital our angular momentum direction. Our rotational angular momentum direction has to be the same. We put the fingers in the direction of rotation, our thumb points out of the board. Uh, so those are aligned. And they're aligned for almost every object in the solar system, not for Venus. Venus, we say, has retrograde rotation. Its rotation is opposite its uh, orbital motion. And that leads to something completely different than what we're about to talk about here. It's the exact opposite effect, uh, the exact opposite difference between the sidereal day and the solar day. So here's the thing we want to think about as we do this. We'll look at this and we'll say, okay, if we draw an arrow that points directly up at the sun, um, if we weren't moving, one rotation later this would be pointed back at the sun. And would, that would be great. We would be able to say the sun is back at the same relative position in the sky, directly as high as it gets in the sky. It's going to be at that height, however high that is for us, um, and that depends on our our latitude. But however high the sky gets in the sun, uh, the sun gets in the sky, um, it's going to get back there one rotation later. But that's not quite the case because we've moved over here in one rotation. So there we are, one rotation later. We've gone around this direction to one rotation later, and now the sun's not directly overhead. We have to over-rotate a little bit uh, in order to get the sun directly overhead. Now, we can do a really quick, fast, simple kind of calculation. An approximation is what we're going to do here. And we're going to say to complete one orbit all the way around the sun takes about 365 days, and we move about 360 degrees. Now, we got a lot to talk about here, and we're going to talk about this over the, the coming days. Uh, things will go by pretty quickly, but uh, so the sun's not, the Earth's not moving at the same rate in its orbit all of the time. But uh, it's not speeding up and slowing down that much, so we're not that far off. We're going to do a little bit of approximating to figure out what's going on. We're not that far off saying it moves about one degree per day in its orbit. Every every. Every day, the Earth moves about one degree, and you see that I've exaggerated that then, but that's about one degree right there. And so the Earth, more or less, has to over-rotate by about one degree in order to get the sun back directly overhead. So however long it takes. So now, here's the idea. Here's the idea. is to say that when we've gone here to here, the stars are way out here. Not to scale, not to scale. The stars are, are way up there on this scale. I mean, way up there. And so the stars can't really tell that we've moved from here to here. The very nearby stars, if you work really hard, you can see uh, the nearby stars moving as we move. It took it took generation after generation after generation of astronomer to try to observe that trigonometric parallax, and that will be a story that we tell. But for, for, for the most part, that's a very tiny motion. We don't notice it. Very small relative to this one degree. Uh, in fact, you know, our angles, we, we, we say there are 60 arc minutes per degree and 60 arc seconds uh, per arc minute. And so there are 3,600 arc seconds in a degree. And the parallax is of the nearest, very, very nearest stars, the parallax shift over the course of the year. As we move around from here to here, the very nearest stars have parallax of less than an arc second. Um, so compared to the motion of the sun, it's, it's, it's thousands of times smaller. So we're not going to worry about this right now. And that's only the very nearest stars. Most stars, you can't even detect it. Um, so, so as we go from here to here, the star, the star that we were looking at gets back to the same spot in the sky uh, in one rotation. And that one rotation takes us about 23 hours and 56 minutes. And so this, that, that's what we call the duration of the sidereal day is 23 hours and 56 minutes. And so that's how long it takes a star to get back to the same spot in the sky. 
and, and the sidereal day will always be whatever object you're looking at, uh, Mars, Jupiter, uh, the sidereal day will always be equal to the rotation period. Uh, so this is our rotation period. And you have a project coming up that I'm going to ask you to try to measure that sidereal day by going out and looking at the stars. And so we'll, we'll help you with that. We'll shoot some videos like this to try to get you, get you, get you help with that project. Um, some of the night sky watching videos that are already out there will help, um, but this is um, this this is the rotation period. Now the solar day is the time it takes to get the sun back directly overhead, and so the solar day is the time it's going to be longer as long as we have prograde ro rotation. As long as we're rotating in the same sense that we're orbiting, the the solar day is going to be longer than the sidereal day. And that solar day is going to take be however much longer is however long it takes to rotate one degree. So how long does it take us to rotate one degree? Well, again, very roughly speaking, we can just, we're just going rough. Uh, we're going to rotate 360 degrees. That's one full rotation in about 24 hours. Okay, so that means we rotate about uh, looks like 15 degrees per hour to me. Okay, that's all good. And if we rotate 15 degrees per hour, uh, then that means we're going to rotate 15 degrees divided by 60 uh, minutes per hour um, is going to be um, 15 divided by 60. It looks like we're going to rotate about a quarter of a degree in, um, so, so it looks like we're going to rotate about, about a quarter of a degree in a minute, right? Uh, 15 divided by 60 is one-fourth. And so that equals about one quarter of a degree per minute. So to get one degree, we got to do four of those quarters, and that's going to get us one degree in about four minutes. Okay, so it takes about four minutes to do this extra rotation. You add four minutes to this 23 hours and 56 minutes, and you get 24 hours for the solar day. So our solar day, now the solar day will vary because we're speeding up and slowing down as we, as we get closer and further away from the sun, like we mentioned a moment ago. But you see the idea here is that we can get this, um, this solar day is about four minutes longer. If we were rotating faster, we wouldn't have gone as far in our orbit, and we also would not take as long to cover that extra uh, that extra rotation that we need. So if, if we're if we're rotating faster, um, this the difference between the sidereal day and the solar day is going to get smaller. If we're rotating more slowly, um, then we're going to go further in the orbit and need to over rotate more, and it's going to take longer to do that over rotation. And those two things are going to couple to make the difference larger. Um, likewise, if we have the same rotation period. Um, and we have a faster orbit, then it's going to be a bigger difference because we've gotten further, we have to over-rotate more. If we were had a retrograde rotation and we're, we're rotating this direction, then the solar day would be shorter than the sidereal day um, if we defined them the same way we do now. And, and so... Um, this is, and we would, I think, more or less. We might not, we might not call the hour quite the same, but but that's more or less what we would do. Now, one more idea while we're here talking about this is to say the sun is projected against these background stars. It has moved one degree. There's our projection against the background stars. A day later, the projection is over here. So the sun moves about one degree to, per day against the background stars. And as it moves against those background stars, you know the Earth rotational axis is tilted 23 and a half degrees relative to its orbital axis. So we see the sun and we see the sun moving against the background stars as we orbit around this way. Here's the sun. And as we orbit around this way, we see the, Earth, the, the sun against different positions in the, in the sky. Um, but we also see the sun because our equator is projected. If it's over here, if we're tilted toward it in the, in the northern hemisphere like this, the sun is north of the equator. The equator is down here. The sun is north of it. Now, if we're tilted away from it in the northern hemisphere, the equator's up here, and the sun is below it. Because this tilts 23 and a half degrees, the sun can move 23 and a half degrees uh, south to 23 and a half degrees north. And so you'll see a constellation chart will look something like this. And we're going to work with these constellation charts in lab next week. 
And so our constellation charts, well, look at that. My folder there has only circumpolar constellation charts in it. So we'll use the one in the book right here. Um, so we'll use a constellation chart that looks like that. That curved path on a constellation chart is the path of the sun uh, uh, during the year. And the date that's written below there tells you what date the sun is at that position. Uh, this is the, the winter solstice for what we call the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. Uh, the December solstice is where the sun reaches its lowest point in the sky. It's The Earth's tilted most away from the sun for northern hemisphere observers and it gets this negative declination so we're moving in right ascension because of the orbit around duh, 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 and we're moving in declination because of the tilt as the, as we're tilted toward it's getting further above our equator and as we're tilted away it's getting further below our equator and you can see that in a constellation chart like this uh, there are constellation charts on your on your course katie site uh, for you to work with and we'll work with them in lab but i will record a special one of these for lab for next week uh, that's it for today, I think. That's all the videos we're going to upload there for today. We'll do some more concept videos next week. We'll keep adding these out there. Hope they're helpful. Have a good day, everybody.